Birds are singing in the trees All the leaves are falling in the breeze The views all around are the best you've seen Living on the land Welcome to Country Cousins! And what's on today's show? Not sure yet? Not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, listen, let me fill you in. We, you two are actually going to be on Country Cousins yeah. and uh, we're going for some horse riding adventures, some of our horses. Mm. But while I've got you both here, sort of captives in front of the camera, <laughs> where, where are we? In our hay paddock. Yeah. And which suburb is that? Um, don't know. Mountain. You don't know? Down the other end. Mountain View? Oh, of Mountain course. View. <laughs> Mountain View. Suburb. <laughs> what is a suburb? A suburb is like a town. A oh, small town. town. Okay, Mountain View. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Righto. So while I've got you here, um, we can just have a little chat about your lives here. Because it's quite different to a town life, isn't it? Mm. Yes, very, very different. different. Very, 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 very different. Yes, good. <laughs> I get that idea. Now, it's it's also different again because once all that lockdown stuff was over, you lot decided to just stay home schools, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And okay, you start, Henry. What do you think of homeschooling? Well. It's good because you find all these things that you never thought ever existed. There's lots of library groups, but then there's also ones at parks, and we go to all sorts of groups around in this area. They're mainly in, like, the little towns like Warrigal or Langatha or Corumburra. At home, we do reading, writing and maths each day, we probably get a better education homeschooling than we would at school. Okay, no worries. Righto. Now, what do you think of your homeschooling? Um, well, it's really fun because you get to meet new kids. Um, there's no school uniform. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be good. You could wear whatever you like. I'd like that. Well, I do like wearing whatever I like. <laughs> Yeah, and also um, homeschooling is really fun because like you can do what you want. Like you can do like tons of maths, like what I like to do. Are you a mathematician? Yes, yes. I love doing maths. Or you could do tons of writing. Also, what I like to do. Yeah. <laughs> he likes reading and writing, but I only oh, like reading. That, Hannah, it's uh, ma it's writing and maths, uh, not reading. Yes, fine. Sorry. <laughs> but you do like reading, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let, shall we go off on a horse riding adventure and come back? Yeah. Yeah. Let's sure. do that then. Here we go, off to the high plains. <laughs> well, hello, Stay Rose. Right. You're hello, a marvellous Irish person that you are. You've been coming on our rides for a long time, haven't you? I have, since about 1986. And I think you haven't fallen off much, have you? I haven't fallen off much. I was hit in the head by Juno when I was climbing back in the saddle on the road. John was holding Juno. Juno reared up. She hit me in the head and I was knocked to the ground and concussed. Miller was a tiny baby. It was stinking hot. Judy Bursteiner had fallen off and she couldn't ride anymore. So we're on the road back to the farm. Jan is driving with Milla standing up in her arms, screaming her head off. And a guy stopped who was giving me a lift home and I said, Jan, give me the baby. And so I drove home with the baby screaming to start with and then she fell asleep. Ah, oh, okay. So there was that. The other time I was six months pregnant. Nobody knew except John. I was riding banjo. We were down in Allenby somewhere and we went under a low branch and I fell off and under the horse and I remember standing up and looking at John and John looking at me 
And I thought, okay, I'm six months pregnant. I think I better stop riding. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, no, I think I've hung on very well. Thank you very Marvellous. much. Marvellous. And you've been in some of the long <clears throat> hauls, haven't you, where you've been starving out in the middle of nowhere starving caught in the snow on mount bobo in a queen's birthday weekend 1988 i think 87. a certain person turned up with no sleeping bag no swag <laughs> and it wasn't max and the same person lost his holiday pay fifteen hundred dollars in, in the wallet in his back pocket um, so yeah, look, I the rides have been them. fabulous. I'm glad I survived them. I'm glad I've done them. I think we would all say the same thing. Well, you still go out. I still go out. And the web rides have been a significant part of our lives. And we've made very good friends. And we're still good friends. And we can still come and do this after almost 40 years. Fantastic. Now back it's to the old 40 years cash in the back pocket. That kind of money I prefer to bury in a kerosene tin. Well, he was, it was, he was thinking of leaving it in his car apparently and mm. his friend said, no, don't leave it in your car. It'll be stolen. Take it well, with you. Well, the cars weren't always safe up there because there was a flood on one ride and everyone came back down the mountain to and towards the, car, the yeah. collar and the cars had floated away. Well, my car had been dragged out. <laughs> I had a yellow Mitsubishi oh, oh. station yeah. wagon that got dragged out um, <clears throat> and I remember Shane what's his name his car was in the river and there were a few other cars <laughs> I think maybe on the same ride Marcus rolled his Renault he had was that a Renault Marcus. you had the yellow Marcus a come yellow. in Renault. The yellow Renault, yeah, <coughs> he in, rolled it in. and he survived. They all lived to tell yeah, the tale. And on the same about... ride, I crashed the B Brumby. The Brumby had yeah, just you, been... Yeah, you crashed the red Brumby. I crashed the Brumby and he crashed... <laughs> Yeah, and we, we, all we rolled a yellow Renault and there was a Noli, myself, John Clark <laughs> and a French-Canadian French guy, Andre, Andre. In, in the vehicle. And we righted ourselves, we kicked the windscreen out and we drove, drove down to La Cola and two weeks later I came back, I bought a second hand windscreen, just taped it in and drove it back home. So I left in La Cola for a week. Oh okay, yeah. well you didn't lose a car in the flood then? No, but uh, others did, so um, uh, Nan lost her blue Renault, same as mine, <laughs> and there was a brand new Holden Commodore, I think it was Shane's, and it was just stonewashed under the bridge. <laughs> You know, it, it was like a pair of jeans that had oh. been sort of really well washed. Marvellous. Yeah. Marvellous. Now, something spectacular else happened to you up on one of the rides? Oh, just the wonderful company and the camaraderie and the friendship and just being with the horses and enjoying the countryside. I think that's pretty wonderful Good. itself. It is very wonderful and it's marvellous that you've come out of it unscathed. Oh, a few, a few offs, you know, the odd <laughs> bruise here and there, but nothing major, thank goodness. Yeah. Good. Ha! Huh. Welcome back to Country Cousins. Now, I don't think I actually introduced you two, or did I? No. I don't okay. think so. No. Hmm. All right, well, who are you? I'm Helena Bannigan and I'm 12. And I'm Henry Bannigan and I'm 9, turning 10, quite soon. Righto, now living out here in the country, now this is basically your whole backyard, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, pretty big compared to like all those city backyards, which are tiny. Yeah, you can barely set up a tent in them. <laughs> yeah, true story. Now, your next door neighbour is right over there, that house, right over there. Way off in the distance. <laughs> yeah, that's a really far... Around two hills away, I'd say. Yeah, very far away. <laughs> that's good. Now, you've got all this space to run and uh, you probably climb trees and I know you've got a whole lot of gym equipment and all that stuff, but you also, you go on bicycle rides from whoop whoop to whoop whoop, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, wherever whoop whoop is. <laughs> yeah. Where's whoop whoop, Helena? Um, wherever you want it to be. <laughs> well, there's fantastic bicycle riding trails from the main towns like Currumburra to Lock yes. and Nyora and Leenapa. Is it called the Southern Great, the Great, Great Southern, Southern Rail, Rail Trail? Trail. 
Yes. So how, you'd go riding for how long would it take you to get from one of the, along one of those trails? Half an hour, maybe half an hour to an hour. Yeah, around that. Yeah. Mm. And they're like they're like maybe sixteen k's. Some of them. Yeah. Around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gosh. You'll ride half an hour in oh, like sixteen k's in half an hour. Well, there's bigger ones and there's smaller ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, now that's nothing to do with your homeschooling. That's just part of your recreation, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, slightly it is part because we wouldn't have time to do that if we were at school. Yeah. Mm. He's right, so actually. It's slightly part of the homeschooling, but then we might be a- we would have been able to do them on the weekends. Well, if you were going to school, you'd be catching a bus and you'd probably be spending at least an hour and a quarter each way on the school bus, wouldn't you? That's probably two and a half hours easy a day travelling. Wouldn't Mm. that be right? Yeah, Yeah. around there, yeah. All right, and now you have some horses on your farm too, don't you? Yeah, just only two, but... Yeah. Mm. Shall we go and check out another horse riding adventure, do you think? Sure. Sure. Okay, let's do that. Hello, hey, Christine. Christine Walker was Wilson. You know. Oh, you. Oh, you're still a W. Yeah, you're yeah, like yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Didn't change Christine too much. Christine W. Um, we did the. Were you on the fire ride? No, no, no. no. The fi- famous fire ride. I can't remember. I think it was 1997 when the Alpine National Park burnt down. We, yeah, we were um, camping up at Dunsmuir, and we'd seen a line of smoke up the day before. <laughs> And we're sitting there in the morning having coffee with a fire and next thing a helicopter flies in and lands on the paddock and a police officer comes running across. We think we're in trouble for having a fire. And he said that there was a major bushfire and that we needed to be moving out. They predicted that the bushfire would come around in a particular direction and then turn in the middle of the afternoon, head north. And that if we could get to, I think it's mustering flats or... I always get the name wrong, but I think it's mustering flats down on the Maroka River. If we could get down there, he said we'd be reasonably safe. So that's where we pushed on. Well, he on wanted for. you to go out in a helicopter and well, let the horses yeah, go, didn't Yeah, we you? had an option of getting on the helicopters there and then and just leaving um, everything behind, but we chose not to do that. So we all rode out to that spot, which was declared to be a spot that would be, you know, safe. How long did it take you to get uh, there? That wasn't too long. I mean, that was sort of um, Dunsmuir's to Maroka was a reasonably solid ride, but not, you know, insane. And then we got there and, of course, just mass confusion ensued because the problem with the bushfire is even though the, the, the smoke may be miles away, everything turns orange. I mean, seriously, the colour that was around us just looked like a full flame in colour. It was so red. It didn't smell, but obviously there was smoke somehow in the sky and stuff, so all of the light was reflecting red, and it was really scary. So we're sitting there trying to make up our minds, will we keep going or not? And it was really interesting because it was like a study in psychology. Um, Caroline got out of Banana Lounge, put her bikinis on, and started reading a book. (laughs) My sister Robin got all of the supplies and put them in the river and got all of the horse blankets and wet them all down so that we could shelter from the fire in the river and have food. So same circumstance, two entirely different reactions. Um, uh, John and Arthur went up to the fire tower to ask them what was going on and they couldn't see anything and didn't know. And then on the way back they ran into a couple of blokes who had been burning off in advance of the fire and that that fire had got away from them so they were kind of getting out Um, and so they came back and then the decision was that we'd go out and then of course what ensued was what some of the funniest conversations ever really when you think about it because the guy that got off the helicopter said whatever you do stay off ridges try and get down into the valleys and uh, you know, stay on roads and all that sort of thing. Because so, fires jump from ridge to ridge. Well, they don't travel they? up hills, and the worst place you could be would be on the ridge. So, then the conversation went. Well, let's go down into the Wangangara, which was quite a hike, and you had to walk down this ridge for about four hours. So, I certainly wasn't going to do that. And finally, somebody um, said, "Well, there's a paddock outside the national park that I know of that I've camped in before, where we can put the horses. Let's ride there." And so then we started off down this road called Marathon Road. 
And it's called Marathon Road because it is the length <laughs> oh, of a yeah. marathon. <laughs> and we rode all the way down at trotting for, I think it was about eight hours solid. Just This was during the night, wasn't no, it? No, this rode... was during the day oh. to get away from there. But then we just kept on going and going and going. And then it got into the night. But we rode eight solid hours during the day and then we kept going and um, Jenny Cleaver knew where this place was and, and look she did well she led us there but she just kept on saying oh it's not far now but of course then we'd ride oh. for another hour <laughs> and, then, and so it went on but we, we trotted on these horses you know because trotting doesn't tire the horse too much um, it can be a bit hard on the rider but the horse can keep going so if you if you're Walking, it was too slow to travel that distance. We had to trot, but we certainly couldn't canter the horses because they'd, they'd, they'd wear out. So we rode and rode. I don't know how long. I, I reckon we might have been on the horses 12 hours. Mm. It was pretty wild. Later when it became dark, obviously we were walking and we were sort of going down these fire tracks to try to get to this place. We eventually found it, but of course the vehicle um, that had the food and our swags in it had got lost and couldn't find its way down. We could hear it driving around in the oh, bush, yeah. um, but it couldn't find its way on the road into where we were. Uh, eventually they turned up. Who but, was driving the landing? Um, Wayne, and there was a girl with him. I can't remember who that was, but thank God, when we were, drive, when we were riding along the road, uh, along Marathon Road, um, Wayne and whoever it was stopped and set up the lunch for us. So we had a really good lunch on the side of the road. Could you see the orange sky still? No, 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 because we were sort of riding in, away from that. The, the orange sky, yeah, kind of disappeared. I, and I think this is the complexity with fire. You've got no idea what's going on. So, and it was a hell of a fire. I mean, it was a really major, mm, yes, large fire. Yes, it definitely was. And I think at that point, the fire had turned. So as predicted, the fire did turn, so all of the smoke would have been blowing in the opposite direction. But anyway, we rode on and then eventually we got to where we were going. We lay down to go to sleep with our dryers and bones on our helmets and rest our head on the saddle. And then it started raining. Oh, <laughs> Well, that's a marvellous ending to a horror journey. I know, but it was so funny because, of course, we just I just started laughing. I thought it was so hysterical that here we were, we'd been doing this, running away from bushfire and it starts raining. Um, the vehicle finally got there. The next morning we all got up and we just had, I think, one of the most joyous days <laughs> that we've ever had horse riding because there was a water pool there, the camp was there, we all felt like we were safe, we were all tired. Um, but we were all so relieved to have been out from where we were. And, oh, Robin Wheeler, oh. that's right, and Jenny Cleaver did this whole, when we got to where we were going, they, did, they kept on riding and they went down to a farmhouse um, so that we could get a vehicle and go and find the truck. That's right. So there were some real heroes that day. Um, and then the next day we just had a ball. It was lovely. But, you know, there were two people that got up in the morning and said, we're going. They had had enough and they were still frightened. And I kind of... I, I got mm. that, and they were people who'd never been horse riding before. No, no. Uh, well, no, they hadn't been on a web ride. They might have done a bit of riding, but like they were, they had been put through. I mean, the longest ride I've ever been on, and um, they well, just... it wouldn't be good for a newcomer, would it? <laughs> no way. Wouldn't it be good for anyone? But... <laughs> Oh, well, anyway, that's marvellous. And, uh, so you... yeah, and that's my telling of it. But if you ask somebody else, I can guarantee you they'll tell you a different story. So you need to get as many versions of that day as possible because everybody's got slightly different memories and it's, um, it's good. But, Very good. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. See ya. I think we'll head off for another High Plains horse adventure and uh, you can have... Yes. Righto, will we do that? Sure. Okay. Oh, hello there, Peter Phipps. <laughs> hello, Christine Webb. Now, here we are down at your lovely little farm, Let, yeah. Farmlet. Yep, yeah, it is. And we're having a, a bash. Well, it's a wake for my little brother, Philip. Yep. And all the horse riders are here. And you've been coming up riding our horses for a long time too, haven't you? Yeah, probably. On and off. Yeah, about 15 years. Yeah. But I never had the pleasure of riding with Philip, but I did meet him once. And what a charming man. That's marvellous. Now, um, have you fallen off one of our horses or been well, on Well, Christine, it's funny you know the right questions to ask, <laughs> don't you? So, my first web ride, uh, I was on Vamp and we left your farm 
and headed off up the road and then we get to that point that I'm sure you know very well where John just starts into the forest and that big log that you jump over without telling anyone of course. So there was a Spanish guy in front of me, Argentine guy I think, he just came straight off on the log. So I had a warning that it was coming oh. and, uh, and Vamp just took it because she was in control and I lost a stirrup but managed to stay on so Good. that was my introduction but then about a half an hour later we're going down a steep gully and then I, Gigi of course gets something happens she's got to stop and I'm there on vamp facing downhill bit of a bit naive about all these things and gradually the saddle slipping oh. more and more towards her neck and at a certain point she's just like nah and she just does this little buck and I go flying oh. over her neck and land splat on my face in the mud, oh. sliding downhill a bit. In the mud, in the on mud, your face on in my the face, mud. on my face. And I thought, oh, that could have ended worse. Like that was, <laughs> <laughs> at least I had the downhill slope on my side. Oh. And so I just got back on and I said to John, John, this has happened. He said, well, you should have bloody turned her around or put your hand on her neck or something. And I was like, okay, this is how the web rides work. This is good. <laughs> like you learn, you learn from doing it. And I thought, this is great, I'm in. Ah, good. Yeah. You had a black face then. I had a black face, oh, yeah. yeah. And then that day we um, we also ended up rounding up one of your neighbour's cattle for him. So he oh. saw us going by. So it was oh. a long day. Yeah, and uh, and now I was in heaven. And Vamp did a great job. And then, you know, your hills, like, I can't remember which neighbour it was, John could tell you. Really steep, big hills. And so we were going around there and Vamp was just into it. She was on fire. She was, like, made for stock work. At the end of a long day's riding, she was quite happy to do it. And luckily, John had seen other people, obviously, over the years arrive who hadn't ridden for a while. So he had me in one of your old family pairs of woolen World War I jodhpurs that were almost like being wrapped up in bandages. <laughs> and so the next day, all my skin was fine. I did walk a little bit funny, but I felt pretty good because, you know, a whole day in the saddle in those. And yeah, I was fine. Well and I think done. I may have been wearing Phillips boots that day as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. So Thank the you. Philip theme continues. Yes, yeah. marvellous. Yeah. You there got another are. one? Well, okay, that's the first ride with John. Uh, then there's many others, like, you know, the high country. Always having wanted to ride the high country and then going up with him. That's, that's special. And one time in particular, leaving Melbourne at 27 degrees in November, and then it's sort of getting cooler as you get up into the mountains, but it's still a beautiful evening and waking up in the morning with everything covered in snow yeah, in late November. That was beautiful. That was just one of those magic moments in the swags around the fire. I know, it's amazing up in the high plains like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I keep saying, oh, John, are you going to do another high plains trip? And he's like, oh, Allenby's, you know, perfect. But I just think that's really special up there. Uh, and then there's, you know, there's always the tragic stories. I had this little mare I'd trained up and I took her out to Allen B oh. for, a, for an event and it was her first sort of big thing she was doing and she just had this freak accident, cut her leg and that was yeah, the end of her. I know, that's, yeah. that was... That, that was a sad yeah, day. Yeah. yeah, but there's many stories of sad days with yes. those horses and things happening. But um, um, in the minority, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, John gets rarely shaken but there was one day when I pulled up beside him on Punt Road in the city and I said, and we were in both at, just at this traffic light by chance. And I said, John, you look a bit, you'd look out of sorts. And he said, looked up with that minimal John Webb use of language. Bad day, two horses dead. Don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, yes, there yeah. was a snake bite out That was in the that bush. day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that wasn't yeah. too good. Yeah, I wasn't there for all of that. Mm. But that, no. yeah, that sounded like a sad good. day. Well, all right. Well, thank you for opening your place for this wonderful overnight bash. It a was great. A real pleasure. And there's always a bit of the web spirit here with your old Fergie living here. Oh, that yes, Dad's old great Fergie, so I know. There's that sort of good web spirit always here. And so you're oh, always no. welcome to come and visit and stay. And come and have a go on the Fergie. On the Fergie or just around, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, Thanks, great. Pete. Pleasure, Christine. Thank you. Righto, well that's it for our show. I'm Christine. I'm Helena. And I'm Henry. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. See you next time. Birds are singing in the trees. All the leaves are falling in the breeze. The views all around are the best you've seen. 
living on the land Take another stroll in the morning sun The sun's always brighter when the spring's begun Grab me all together when the day is done Living on the land Living Yeah.